Hey guys, welcome to another episode of The Holy Hour. This is Gavin. I'm here on my own again, but it's been a pretty epic week for Cure fans and the Cure in general, so I figured I should chime in and do a little talking um, while my three-year-old is homesick and he's napping right now, and I realize I haven't talked to anyone like in a long time, so I figured I'd talk to you guys, so thanks for keeping me company. Um, but yeah, like I said, November 13th. Today is a pretty big day. Official Cure sales go on on sale today for the 2016 North American Tour. A lot of pre-sales yesterday and the day before. Um, I did get tickets yesterday through the pre-sale. So it ends well, but I always feel like buying Cure tickets is a bit of a really stressful, unpleasant experience. I'll kind of tell you some of my stories of the Cure shows that I have been lucky to go to and how the ticket buying process went for those, because it's kind of funny, just because it's such a pain. Um, yesterday, I found out about the preset at the last second. They were announcing first, let me backtrack a little, must give kudos and credit, Craig J. Parker has a website. Any real Cure fan probably already knows about this, Craig J. Parker dot blogspot.com I believe it is the chain of flowers website so basically <clears throat> if you want real cure website that gives you constant updates that's the one the, the official cure website's good but everything he tends to get it quicker I don't know what his connection is but this guy is amazing not only does he just have constant up-to-date information you know even gets passed up by the official site a lot of times but yesterday in particular, this guy was figuring out the pre-sale codes for every show. And they were on it. Like every five seconds, you could refresh it and a new one would pop up or he'd have a suggestion or he's hanging in there with you. For some reason, the Atlanta show that we're going to go to on June 24th didn't have the pre-sale code. I don't know why. Everybody else seemed to have figured it out. So I kept refreshing. I was doing this at work, too. So... Um, technically not that kind of dude and not that kind of job but I was like it's the care if I'm gonna get fired over it whatever but um so a lot of shrinking the screens real quick and that kind of thing you know you log in of course then your login doesn't work the one time you want to use it so I had to redo all that and I was able to do it you know in enough time before the actual sale went down but I kept refreshing the page in the Atlanta pre-sale one they didn't have the code and then he was awesome he posted well, it looks like they're not going to post it a few minutes before we're on. He said, here's the passwords for the other ones. Just try them. you got to guess. And then just guess disintegration song titles or wish song titles if that doesn't work. I was like, oh, man, because I really wanted to just do a couple quick click kind of things. I get them or I don't. You know, I'm at work. I can't be trying to hack the damn system, you know, and while I'm supposed to be doing real work. I start to, of course, get into the system. It's going. The wheel's turning. I don't have the code, so I start, sure enough, just plugging them in by about the fourth one. It was the Cure 2016, all strung together, I believe. Um, and it worked, so awesome. Would not have been able to get through if it wasn't for him. Uh, so thank you, Craig. Man of mystery out there. You're, you're a Cure god and um, should be rewarded in Cure heaven. So thank you. And if, it, if you aren't familiar with that site and you're a Cure fan, definitely, that's the one, Chain of Flowers. You could probably just Google Chain of Flowers, the Cure, and it would pop up. So, anyway, I get into the system. I finally get the code in. Of course, I had to re-enter my credit card the, from the first time, but luckily I did all that in advance. But the last second, they're like, what's the three-digit pin on the bag? I was like, oh, my God. So I got decent seats, I think. I got, um, in the first section, 101. It's on the right-hand side, stage left, so I'll be more Simon side, um, and row T, so I'm not quite right up in the front, but I don't think they do like a double letter or anything, so it really is, you know, A, B, C, D, all the way to T, and that's where we'll be, but so I was like, cool, whatever, it was a pain, I pulled it off at work, it was a little tricky, Live Nation sold the tickets, we had friends that worked there before and stuff, but... They were a little shitty in the end, I felt like, because I was blazing through it. You know, of course it works. I probably wasn't paying the most attention, but they're trying to tack on all this stuff, and you're just trying to hit OK, OK to confirm your ticket. Ended up buying some kind of ticket insurance, so that's kind of lame. It was only like 7 bucks or something, but at the same time, and I'll probably need it, having a kid and 
planning seven months away and it wouldn't hurt to have insurance probably but i don't even i started to read over the thing and uh it's like a full reimbursement in case of these situations death <laughs> if i fucking die i don't really it's not a ticket's not gonna be really a factor probably i would hate to stick you know my lovely wife with a cure ticket if i can't go to the show but at the same time there's probably bigger issues at hand um so who knows? Well, at least at least she'll get an extra hundred bucks back. Tickets were about hundred bucks for these, so I guess that's a good enough seat if it was in that bracket. Not too many bands I would go through this process for anymore. Um, I kind of forget a lot of times going to shows. We tend to go to ones you just buy the ticket at the record shop or at the door, and uh, it's a pretty easy process. But they really do make it just a really unpleasant experience, and it's kind of sad. You know, I think back to the, like the 90s when Pearl Jam was battling Ticketmaster and, you know, it's kind of like Pearl Jam, whatever, you know, who cares? But, you know, credit to them then, hindsight too. Ticketmaster is evil, all these are. They tack on so much crap, they make it so unfun. You have to enter all these like anti-robot codes just to get through. Hands were like shaking trying to order these damn things, you know. It's like, come on, you know, every time the little wheels spin in, you you know you're just losing another row or another seat. So stressful. But anyway, in the end, like I said, you feel good because you got them. And uh, since I'm home with my sick kid today, and this is the official sale date, it's like, eh, what the hell? I'll try it on the actual sale date to see if, you know, sometimes they bump back to the start and maybe you can sneak in there. So right at 10 o'clock, bam, I was in there again and uh, punched it in. And the first thing that popped up was section... 203 so pretty good chunk back from there and i was like Ugh, well i'm not gonna upgrade for that so i refreshed it the next refresh was the lawn seats these are all big pavilion shows of course refreshed it again after that more lawn seats and then this is all started at 10 by like 10 03 04 maybe i think the whole damn thing sold out i couldn't see anything so it's like, wow, I guess I did better than I thought yesterday. So I'm very happy with my row T tickets. I always feel like so many people just like cheat now, you know, you know just get it on Craigslist and you'll end up in the front row, and which is awesome. And for the cure, I could see doing that, but I don't know, it's kind of cheating to me. I feel like you got what you got, you know? So hopefully it won't be a bunch of uh, businessmen in the first five rows and that aren't even paying attention or doing whatever but it's kind of sad to think like if you're a band that big and you're playing to a crowd of people too and the ones that you are actually making eye contact with like at least 75 percent of them are like you know some kind of like stockholder people you know like people that got the tickets from their whatever you know record executive people or you know and they're not even like the like the passionate fans are up in the nosebleeds and stuff, so it's kind of sad. But I'd like to think even the uh, contest winners or something, you know, can balance it out. So me and my wife will be going to Atlanta June 24th. We'll figure out something to do with the child. He's not quite ready to appreciate it yet. But yeah, thinking back, it was always kind of a, a pain buying a cure ticket. I've seen them. This will be my ninth show, if I'm counting it right. Um... But yeah, I just kind of jotted down some some of the highlights of over the years. The first time I saw The Cure was in 92 for Wish. I was a freshman in high school. And I remember we had to call Ticketmaster. And uh, that was super stressful because it would just be get on. You go, you call in and it's just busy. You call in and it's busy. It's calling and busy. You keep just doing the redial, redial method. And eventually got through. Then they put you on hold. And again, that whole time, you know you're just losing a seat, losing a row. There was always a person back then, so you'd have to like read them the credit card number and everything. And it's just like, oh man, this things go so fast. But I remember doing that and uh, being super stressed out and ready to throw up because I was so scared that I wasn't going to break it through and nervous. And I remember we were buying them for a couple friends. I don't remember the full story, but I remember something I felt crappy about. Like we got them for like four friends in one spot, but then there was like two other friends, including my my next door neighbor bill hey bill and um and i didn't get one for him initially and we we're like oh man and uh but my guilty conscience got to me after we got our tickets 
And I ran over to his house and was like, hey, uh, cure tickets are going on sale. You should try to get them just to, like, get him in on the action. But and they're like, well, call him back and add him to yours. And I was like, it doesn't work like that. And <laughs> it turned into this whole debacle. But I um, ended up just calling again and getting, I think, a couple separate seats. So he ended up going, and I'm glad he did. And by 96 was the next time for Wild Mood Swings. We saw him at George Mason at the Patriot Center. And that was probably the funnest experience because we figured on this one there was a Ticketmaster outlet. We're like, we're doing it. We're going to like camp out like in the movies. And and uh, we had friends that had a place up there. So we went up there the night before thinking we'd camp it out. I think we kept scoping it out and nobody was camping out. You know, this was probably like the cure was losing some popularity a bit at that point, but still pretty huge. So we kept an eye on it, but we had this great night of just drinking and watching I think it was this live in uh, Rio like two VHS worth bootleg or something and just watching cure bootlegs all night and we stayed up all night and we went out there maybe like five in the morning or something and got a spot and just held it down and we're sitting there we're feeling cool we're like this is gonna be awesome front row for sure they open the doors and they're like we're doing it lottery style now and um doesn't really matter where you are in line, you're going to draw a number, and then based on that number, <laughs> I didn't really remember repositioning in the line or what, but somehow it was like a lottery, I guess, and we kind of ended up where we were in line, and, you know, so it wasn't great, but at the same time, it was better than the Wish Tour seats we got. They are kind of, you know, just still maybe where it was starting to get up on the sides of a stadium, not on the floor or anything. So I was happy, but a little disappointing because we, you know, put in the, the early waking hours of waiting for the tickets. So yeah, a bit disappointing. We, we thought we'd probably get really awesome seats, but we we're happy with them. And it was a great show. Um, like I said, I won't go into the details of the show. This is just the ticket buying experience. Um, so after that, it was a couple unmemorable ones. So that must have been around when the internet first started kicking in and it went fairly smoothly. The next time I'd see The Cure would be around 99, 98. Um, there was a WHFS, the alternative rock station in, near D.C. There was a big station at the time. They'd have these festivals, and they'd have a Christmas one and a summer one, the HF festivals, and they played a Christmas one, the Nutcracker or something, I think it's called. Um, it was a cool show. Was, I had, like, Verve and Sugar Ray. We had to sit there just to get to The Cure at the end. That one was the first time we got, like, back seats of the floor. And I remember being super happy with that. I can't really remember any stories of buying the tickets from that that experience. I think it must have been internet or maybe just – or maybe because I was going to George Mason, then I was able to, you know, hit the station a little easier. But um, that one in the Blood Flowers Tour 2000, they played at Meriwether Pavilion. Same kind of deal, unless they called in or used the internet. Just got pretty, pretty bad seats, but you know, any seat was good seat really. Um, back of the pavilion, so I wasn't on the lawn or anything, but kind of back left. That's what I remember of those seats. And um, then we we upped our game. It was kind of a bigger break. Hadn't seen the Cure for a while after that. Wouldn't be till Coachella Festival 2004. It must have been um, where they were headlining and. Uh, it was like, let's do it, going out to the desert, see all these awesome bands and the Cure's headlining, so what more of a reason do you need? And that was technically general admission because you're buying the ticket to a festival. So that was pretty cool just to have that chance where it was like, all right, it's up to you. If you want to get close, you got to make it work. So we're out there in the desert, me and my future wife, and um, didn't want to camp out the whole day in front of that one stage because you're missing a whole festival so we saw some other bands and and then decided to head over to the main stage that the cure would be on in like five hours or something and i remember the two leading up to the cure were air and uh flaming lips and um as far as positioning stories i remember just trying to squeeze in a little bit in between each act you could kind of like when people are shuffling out you could cover a lot of ground there I like Air and Flaming Lips, but I'm not a huge fan of either of them. Um, both of which I'd be way more into if they weren't playing before The Cure, but I was kind of just looking at my watch through their whole set. I remember that was the first time that Wayne from Flaming Lips did the whole get inside the gerbil ball or whatever the hell it was, and we'd 
crowd surf in the big rubber ball or whatever, but they're having trouble getting him in it. So it was delaying their set. And I'm just like thinking, what is this fucking guy trying to do? Just get him in the ball so he can roll his ass out of there and get the cure on. But, I mean, it was a great show in the end. But at the same time, you know, I tried to just use that whole getting in the ball experience time to wiggle forward a little bit and get a better spot. And at that point, that was the closest we'd ever been to the band, and that was pretty amazing. So good position on that one, even though we had to stake it out about five hours in advance. Um, Next one, same year maybe, uh, was another HF Festival. This was a summer one, and again, general admission. I remember tailgating for a long time, so the band must have been terrible. Then the part of positioning again story was the Offspring was playing right before the cure. So naturally, the crowd left for that. <laughs> there wasn't, there's, you know, pretty clear shot to get a good spot on the in front of the stage there, but it was a mosh pit all through Offspring, and friends were getting kicked in the head, and fists were flying, and girlfriends were saying, "Fuck this, this isn't worth it." So a lot of positioning and and people bailing. So yeah, pretty close for that one, even though I had to sit through Offspring to do it. Um, Following that, and this was all three times we saw him that year for the Untitled album, and we saw him again at Merriweather. Pretty good seats, a little far back to the right, and I had a few too many beers for that one, so I don't really remember the seats mattering on the show specifically, so that was just kind of a good show, but not my favorite. The seats weren't amazing, and I don't really remember getting the tickets either, so... That whole year was kind of a blur. <laughs> but uh, made up for it shortly after when 413 Dream came out. We got tickets in Charlotte. We were living in Asheville by this point. And uh, um, KC got the tickets for this one, I'm pretty sure. She's really good. It Well, better than me at pretty much everything. So, including tickets. So, I'm sure she's stressed out a bit over it too. But she's able to get, like, awesome floor seats. Um, can't remember how many rows back, but it was definitely the best spot for like a really long awesome show and um you know behind seeing them for the first time my favorite cure show for sure so yeah that was a hopefully not too painful experience for her uh poor was back in the band there so it was good to, to get a good view of him and um and then we had our one and only denial of cure tickets uh, my wife was trying to get the tickets again for that one um, up in New York, I don't remember if it was Madison Square Garden or where, but the Reflections tour, those sold out in like four minutes or something, and it was crazy fast, and just, we are like, oh man, it's so defeated, I had never been denied, you know, like we made a set plan that we're going to do it, I remember there's a lot of factors, like I believe she was pregnant at the time, and, and we didn't want to fly, you know, we'd have to fly up there, we'd have to pay a ton for the tickets there's a lot of like you know commitment and money and time and things that we would have had to plan to make that show work so it was slight relief when it didn't when it was just out of our hands we're like oh well you know at least at least we won't be totally broke but we redeemed it this time back in atlanta we will continue seeing the cure and uh from row t i'm looking forward to it seems like it's uh Bound to be a good show. They're calling for old favorites, rarities, and some as yet unreleased songs, they said. So um, a lot of people are thinking that's that's code for a new album, or some new songs at least, that will eventually be on a new album. So that would be pretty sweet. It's always nice to hear a new song for the first time live. Uh, I remember hearing a couple of those for the um, self-titled album uh, at Coachella. So that was cool. And, um, yeah, so I don't know. I think the ticking, ticket buying experience definitely doesn't come close to actually building to the excitement of going to see the care. Um, I don't know if I bashed on them enough by, you know, just the way these ticket companies suck the fun out of it all. I wish there's an easier way, but, I mean, it really is pretty amazing when you're just ordering something like that, thinking of 
how many people are doing it and how fast these seats are going. And it really makes me very happy to know that most of the bands I do go see aren't big enough for it to be a factor. <laughs> and, and, you know, like Morrissey's nice enough to offend half his fans every year. So the, the crowd thins out a bit, I think, um, making it more possible. But the Cure's still rolling strong. The diehard fans are there. Um, I think it's been long enough now, so everyone's really wanting to see them again on this tour since it's been a while. So, so I won't go on and on. This will be a short one, but I just wanted to share that with you. If you have any Cure ticket buying experiences too, I'd love to hear your stories. Um, you could email me them. Maybe I'll do a little add-on to this episode, and if I can read them to you or something, it'd be fun. But or it'd just be fun to share them with me, and I'll just read it and enjoy it myself. But um, as far as contacting me and for the show, uh, you can e- email me, Gavin Connor, at Gavin, G A V I N, Connor, C O N N E R, at gmail.com. Um, you can visit the podcast itself and subscribe or send messages or rate it, however you want to do it, on iTunes. Just punch in the whole hour, the cure, something like that should make it pop up. Um, we're also at podomatic.com, podomatic.com, and there's a theholyhour.moonfruit.com website too. So um, plenty of outlets for dropping a message or sharing a story. So there you go. I hope your experience wasn't as terrible or traumatic as mine, and it paid off, and you're happy with your seats or your lawn seats, and uh Every, every penny of it will be worth it, I'm sure. And uh, maybe I'll see you at that show. We got more, more episodes on the way, so stay tuned. Hoping to get my friend Ryan in here for the next interview. Uh, looks like we'll be able to lock that down fairly soon. So stay tuned, and as always, thanks for listening to me babble about the cure. Talk hard. Bye-bye.